Hi, my name is Casey Bleeker, and I'm the Director of Cloud Advocacy and Enablement at IGNW. I'm incredibly excited today to be part of the DevNet Create Lightning Talks uh, and to speak with you about how cloud is a pattern and not a place. This is a trend that I get to speak with a lot of technical leaders in customer accounts, in partners, various members of the Cisco ecosystem. And we've seen that cloud really as a pattern is a huge driver and it's not intrinsically tied to a place. A little bit about me, uh, you know, I love whitewater river rafting, uh, you know, I'm, I'm big into 3D printing and CNC projects, kind of like the, the woodwork behind me. Um, Homebrewing is one of my biggest hobbies and um, I, I'm a, a contributing member to a number of open source uh, bioinformatics projects for, for big data. So, um, but you may be wondering, okay, but why the hell am I here talking to you about uh, uh, cloud as a pattern? Well, as the Director of Cloud Advocacy and Enablement at IGNW for the last year, I've been managing our Google ecosystem and, and get to talk with a lot of customers about their cloud strategy. And prior to that, I was actually at Cisco. So I, I'm excited to be able to map the conversations that I've had with customers back to uh, you know, the Cisco products and solutions and, and the types of things that we help customers adopt in the Cisco portfolio. Uh, and prior to that, I was in our, our customer and our ecosystems in Microsoft and Cisco uh, for, for about 10 years. So very excited to, to share with you some of the learnings that I've seen and, and that IGNW has seen over the past year around cloud as a pattern and really not a place. To get started, I want to talk a little bit about the digital velocity challenges, challenges that software developers, that businesses with digital practices have. And that's really every business today. This industry as a whole is changing. And there's three main things that we can, we can tie that back to. The first is really that data and devices, they've exploded. We've heard for decades that at some point there will be more devices on the planet than people. Well, that's now happened. Um, we've always heard about automation being required or eventually becoming a, a, a mandatory component of our network and infrastructure management. Well, that's now true. And, you know, we used to imagine that as a, a glowing orb, or at least I did, of a you know, glowing orb in my data center that would automate and, and magically orchestrate everything. Well, it's really just a set of tools and processes that, that automatically configure and, and follow actions based off rules. Um, and that means that we can start to have a very reliable and repeatable environment. That's what businesses require. But there is still complexity there. And so all of our customers, whether it's uh, my internal advocates and IT stakeholders as a software developer or as a Cisco partner helping customers consume and, and use Cisco products, they all need help transacting and managing this massive explosion of data and devices through automation. We also have a major trend in the industry that is, is very valuable, but it is, it is also a challenge. And that is how do I manage all the open source and open API components from all the products that I'm consuming in the market? You know, Cisco has really led this space. You just have to look at the developer portal on DevNet and you compare that to anybody else in the ecosystem and you can see Cisco has invested and leads the space in having open APIs across all of their products. But for customers, this means that they may have a challenge where now they have dozens, maybe hundreds of software components from commercial off the shelf software, open source software, in-house developed applications and scripts. And those things are all integrated into their software delivery platforms, their CICD tools. And that is really what they consider their platform. No longer when I speak with customers, do they tell me I'm an Oracle shop, I'm a VMware shop, I'm a Cisco shop. Now their platform is the tools and processes they built in house. And when, we sh when they want to consume and use something that's incredibly valuable from Cisco, they need to know how does it integrate into that platform? Who's going to help support that? And that's up to us in the DevNet ecosystem to help with that support and that integration. Another major ch trend that we're seeing in the in industry is cloud native. And this is really what I'll spend the, the bulk of my time today talking about is, is these trends around cloud native, how customers are adopting new patterns that really help massively accelerate their software delivery, but it also adds some complexity that they need to know how to manage. In totality, these three items enable customers to be able to build all of their own digital capabilities themselves. And they really need our help to know what are the building blocks and components that they'll leverage and use. To talk a little bit about cloud native as a pattern and this, this, this cloud native uh, construct, I wanna introduce that in the context of kind of the history of cloud adoption. If we think about very legacy data center systems, maybe even all the way back to mainframes, 
when a software developer needed compute resources or storage, they would maybe open an IT help desk ticket and infrastructure would be shipped. And, and it maybe take days, weeks, months. And when public cloud came out, now the developer could have those resources instantaneously. The reality is, is they needed that to remain competitive, to get their software out into the ecosystem as quickly as possible. But the challenge was the IT team lost visibility to what workloads had moved to the public cloud. The business didn't have cost control. Software developers actually didn't have visibility to what all other developers were having. And many businesses started to get concerned about having vendor lock-in and being intrinsically tied to a platform that they had very little ability to move away from. Well, those developers didn't have an option of moving back to a legacy system because they had now had a taste of that agility and the market was now demanding that they move software development at that pace that cloud could deliver. And so now what we've seen is, is there's the evolution of a new pattern, cloud native. And this is really a set of patterns and practices that you can adopt that mean that you can adopt these cloud values, the ability to move at speed, the agility in any environment, in any place. So many customers today moving from legacy systems, software developers, they don't realize it, but they're already making the jump from a legacy system directly to cloud native patterns that allow them to adopt those in any place. So we need to educate them as an ecosystem that one of those places is in a Cisco ecosystem, in a Cisco software defined data center. And for customers already in the public cloud, they're now refactoring their applications to follow these cloud native patterns. So cloud really becomes this pattern and not a specific place. What are one of the, I wanna walk through some of the components that make cloud a pattern and it's all these cloud native constructs. One of the major ones is, is really microservices. It's that software developers are now working on much smaller components and they're building applications with APIs. Each one of their individual microservices is now loosely coupled. This means that I can start to develop just individual components and I can update just small components at a time. And that allows faster iteration. And you know that you're not on microservices. You know that you're on a monolith if you have a specific update date, if you have versions of your software and you're releasing on a month or quarterly or annual basis. Microservices let you move much faster. They also can be individually packaged into what we call containers. And to not get into any of the technical details, containers really just allow my business and my software developers portability. It means that I can run that microservice in any public cloud or my own private data center, and I can scale them as needed on demand. Well, DevOps evolved out of this as a culture of when my software developers hand me a microservice or a container, how does my IT operations team manage that delivery at scale? And the answer is, is that they built a set of patterns and cultures and processes to use automation tools like CICD, continuous integration and continuous delivery. And that's really the source of truth of where applications will be deployed and what infrastructure is required to be able to run and manage those applications at scale. This pattern now leads to a, a, a process that means I can deploy and deliver software at scale rapidly and agilely. Now, not just on a quarter or monthly basis, but every hour, every minute, every second, I can deploy new software and new infrastructure in an automated fashion. And that means that I'm no longer tied to a specific place either. This agility can be delivered in an on-premise environment as well. Well, this cloud native pattern is here to stay. By 2023, IDC says that over 500 million digital apps and services will be deployed using this pattern of cloud native approaches. And by 2025, nearly two thirds of all enterprises will be prolific software producers. We're already seeing this happen because over 50% of, of, of small business, corporate and enterprise accounts today, they're deploying their software more than once per day. And by the end of 2020, it'll be more than once per hour. So rapid software development and automation is already here and cloud native as a pattern is, is what's taken over the industry. Well, as developers, DevNet, and the ecosystem that we've built, we have the ability to take all the Cisco products and map it to the automation products that developers are using and show how Cisco can be that cloud native endpoint, how a software defined data center with all of the, the automation products and software products from Cisco can be managed by a single pane of glass and a single automation framework and all the tools that software developers would normally deploy in a public cloud environment can now run in an on-premise environment. We can also integrate that to build hybrid cloud environments so that these workloads become portable. 
Container orchestration and multi-cluster service meshes allow us to move these workloads between really any endpoint. And that means that we can start to use the cloud purely as a scaling engine. And many businesses would prefer to run their workloads in a fixed CapEx expenditure in their own premise data center. I wanna share one simple success story that we've had. We helped one of the largest retailers in the United States. They were struggling because they had compute distributed out to all of their retail locations and it was aging and their software developers didn't know how to manage and deploy applications to it all at scale, but they couldn't move all those workloads to the public cloud. And they frankly didn't want to because they had a need for compliance, speed, security. They didn't have the you know, complex or, or, or available SD-WAN connections to each site and they wanted to maintain uptime if they lost connectivity. Well, their developers were already using things, uh, they were already developing in Google Cloud using their CICD automation for deployment of their workloads in Google Cloud. And they were strongly considering moving all of those workloads there and sacrificing their compliance and speed and security. Well, we showed them how the same tools they were using in automation with DevNet Ecosystem Exchange resources, which I've linked to here, could manage their Hyperflex environment, manage their ACI environment, manage CCP and Cloud Center, and really abstract the infrastructure complexity away so that it looked like a cloud native endpoint. My favorite quote from this was that the developers at the end said, we couldn't tell when we were deploying to Google Cloud versus a Cisco Hyperflex endpoint because it was still a cloud native process and it was part of that automation pipeline and they weren't concerned about the underlying products. That's really the power that the ecosystem exchange and DevNet as an ecosystem has for our customers and for folks that are really trying to figure out how to adopt cloud native as a pattern and not be intrinsically tied to a specific place. Thank you so much for taking the time today to, uh, to listen to my talk. I hope you find that uh, cloud as a pattern really uh, helps you scale your business challenges for both yourself and maybe your customers. And uh, definitely thinking about it, not intrinsically tied to a place leads to some net new outcomes that DevNet and Cisco are bringing to the industry. Thank you so much and have a great day.